Hey kiddos, this is the launch text, the informative model. The selection is an example of an informative essay, a type of writing in which the author examines concepts through the careful selection, organization, and analysis of information. This is the type of writing you will develop in the performance-based set assessment at the end of the unit. As you read, notice the way the writer provides information about the topic. How are ideas organized and how do the details support the main points? At this point, you should have the Google Doc open so you can take notes about the who, what, where, when, and why of this particular essay, Born Free, Children and the Struggle for Human Rights. In our national anthem, The Star-Spangled Banner, we sing of America as the land of the free and the home of the brave. Throughout much of our history, though, many groups have struggled to share fully in the nation's promise of freedom and justice. Like other groups who have faced unfair or undignified treatment, young people have also realized that in order to be heard, they might have to make some noise. One incident of children raising their voices to advance their rights occurred in New York City during the Newsies strike of 1899. Newsies were children who sold newspapers on the sidewalks of major cities. In the late 1890s, there were roughly 2,500 Newsies in New York City, most between the ages of 6 and 16. The shouts of these children calling, extra, extra, read all about it, were part of the soundtrack of urban life. In that long ago era, before computers, smartphones, television, and even radio, newspapers were the main source of news. The newsies suffered a host of problems. While some lived with their families, many others were orphans, homeless, or both. The United States did not institute laws protecting child workers until 1916, and the newsies were victims of unscrupulous business practices. They often worked 10 or 12 hour days. Most gave any money they earned to their families or used it to pay the cost of few food and shelter for a night. Newsies did not go to school. The newsies' circumstances deteriorated even further during the Spanish-American War of 1898. The public's hunger for news of the war led to increased demand for newspapers. Newsies bought the newspapers from publishers and then sold them to the public. During the war, the price Newsies paid for a bundle of 100 papers rose from 50 to 60 cents. Once the war ended, readership declined. Most newspaper owners responded by returning the price of a bundle to 50 cents, but the two biggest publishers, Joseph Pulitzer of the New York World and William Randolph Hearst of the New York Journal, refused to lower their prices. In addition, both Pulitzer and Hearst discontinued the practice of buying back unsold papers. Instead, they forced the newsies to absorb the losses. On July 20th, 1899, the newsies took on Pulitzer and Hearst by launching a strike. They refused to sell either newspaper and warned off anyone who tried. They bought, brought traffic to a halt by marching through the streets and gathering at the Brooklyn Bridge. They made signs asking the public not to buy Pulitzer and Hearst newspapers, and they chased off men who were attempting to deliver bundles of papers for distribution. The public showed its support, raining coins down on the strikers from the windows of offices and apartments. What began as a localized strike by about 300 newsies near Manhattan's Wall Street soon spread west to New Jersey, south to Brooklyn, north to the Bronx, and east to Queens. The newspapers that covered the strike found ways to show their disrespect for the newsies. There's 3,000 of us on will win for sure is how one newspaper mockingly quoted a newsies reference to the number of strikers. Another newspaper explained that the Newsies were striking for their rights, using quotation marks to imply that the children had no rights and that it was quaint for them to suggest they did. The strike lasted two weeks. Some Newsies were arrested for vandalism. Others were arrested for stealing copies of the Pulitzer or Hearst papers. Although some adults reached out to help the Newsies, most of the power stayed where it started. Pulitzer and Hearst did not lower the cost of newspaper bundles to the pre-war price, but they did agree to buy back unsold copies from the Newsies. It may have been a small victory, but it was more than the Newsies would have received had they not raised their voices. All right, kids, who, what, when, where, why, and how, go ahead and give me a summary in that Google Doc and have a great rest of your week.